Absolutely delighted to be with you all again and a wee recording. We've called this recording Behind the Wheel. My new friends this morning, I'm really excited. I'm sitting here in the Land Rover Freelander and brought her over about 30 miles to a place called Tully Leggan. I want to tell you a story. I want to tell you a story right away that I heard 17 years ago and it always brings a smile to my face every single time that I think about it. My daughter's wedding reception was here and I heard this story and I want to share this story with you. You see friends, way back this Tully Legan estate was 2,000 acres. 2,000 acres of an estate and the man that owned it had a real passion for cars. Now in those early days he was the only man that had a car in the whole of, in fact, County Tyrone I believe. And he was the very first man that drove his car down the streets of Cookstown and for those who don't know Cookstown, Cookstown, Cookstown is one of the, of the, the widest streets in fact in Europe they tell me a way back as, as a market town and if you can picture this man Thomas McGregor Greer driving his French car down the main street and then I heard a story, a story I've heard 17 years ago that when he, he decided he'd buy another car, his second car and his second car came from Belfast. And this particular car gave a bit of trouble. And he heard word of this young mechanic, he was a, he was a, he, in his words, he had a way with engines. And he heard word of this man who had called Harry, who had a way with engines, and he sent for him to come to Tully Legan. 
The Harry we know now, of course, was Harry Ferguson himself. And that's really the, the story is behind the relationship between the owner of Tully Legan and this young mechanic called Harry Ferguson. When Harry, we, Harry Ferguson came over to Tully Legan to look at the car and to service the car. And when Harry came over, he slept beside the stables as part of the stables. And at this very moment, I'm looking straight into the harness room, the harness room where Harry Ferguson stayed when he came to Tully Legan to fix the cars. And this story is really from the stable to the manor house. And you know, friends, and I picture it here, and that's why I had to come here today just to, to record this wee message. I'm just looking at the harness room where Harry Ferguson would have lay up and he'd come to service the cars. And because of Thomas McGregor's, Greer's passion for cars, the two of them had it off right away. This young mechanic coming here to service these cars and Tully Legan. And I suppose with the different conversations went on over a period of time, it wasn't too long till Harry Ferguson was no longer in the harness room, no longer was lying beside the horses here, he was over in the manor house itself. No longer was he fed in the kitchen and, and the parlours we would have called it. Very soon he was in the big table in the manor house. And that started a relationship up between the two of them, a relationship that was to last a lifetime in fact, and then eventually when Harry Ferguson had a passion for agriculture, a passion for, for tractors and whatever, Tully Legan was the base that they, they, they'd try out all the machines and, and all the trials because McGregor Greer gave him the fields at the back to practice on, to, to do demonstrations, to do different trials and testing of their machines so as nobody would see them, so there'd be no press. And that rapport kept going and in fact McGregor Greer got the very first tractor that Harry Fergus produced, and it was here in the museum behind us up until about 10 years ago when it went to the museum in Coventry. They've replaced it here with a wee Ferguson number 24 of the Ferguson Brown. And that started a relationship, Bob, and I suppose I wanted to tell this story because behind the wheel is my God. And you've just heard the song, Behind the Wheel. But I want you to tell you a wee story of my own passion, what it really means to me, you see. With, as we think of the relationship between Harry Ferguson and, and McGregor Greer, as we think of from the stable to the manor house, and of course I can think of an illustration from the Word of God as the whole God's great plan of salvation itself that, that took the Lord Jesus Christ from the manor house, from heaven, to go to the stable, to be born in a stable in Bethlehem, and to serve in this year and for 33 years as he, as he, as he talked and worked to people to go to the cross at Calvary, and then from the cross at Calvary to go back to the manor house of heaven itself. But I want you to go back a wee bit here. I want you to tell you why you're the passion of come here and why the title of this whole series of Behind the Wheel. The passion is this, my friends. When I was 13 years old, I had an experience with God. I, I cried unto God for mercy on a wee local mission hall. And something that happened to me that day that, that didn't really fully develop for about another 40 years, friends. 40 years later, this lady was praying for me. A local lady was praying for me that she would take me to a meeting on the Sunday, her and her husband. And when I went to that meeting, this real hunger came on me for the things of God. A hunger came on me for the Word of God. Now, I wasn't educated at school or anything. I left school at 15 and... And I never really read a full book in my life, I don't think. And yet we all had a hunger. And I thought, if I could get a hold of some CDs or tapes that I could play in the tractor at home, I could play in the car or wherever. And I just, I just happened naturally. I grabbed a hold of a lot of CDs. I grabbed a hold of a, a few tapes. And I started playing in the tractors. I started playing it in the, the, the boring jo jobs on the farm, you might say. All the different things where you're doing the rolling and the rolling the fields or drawing out slurry or, or doing all these things that, and drawing on sage. And I had the word of God in the tape player. I had the word of God pushed onto the CD player. And as I listened to it, God fed me through behind the wheel. He fed me through the tractor. He fed me through 
the Freelander now. He fed me through an old Peugeot car that I had. I remember doing long journeys to the south of Ireland when I would have, I remember listening to the word of God the whole way to all the far side of Dublin and back again. And, and sometimes I didn't even remember the roads that was on. Friends, I was so engrossed and God fitted me through the flappy bits. And then, you know, friends, I saw, a, I listened to a sermon one day, I'm a, I'm a Freelander, a sermon that from a very famous preacher called Martin Lloyd-Jones. And he said on the tape one day or on the CD, the greatest experience of his life, the greatest revelation of his life, when he understood what Romans 10 verse 17 really meant, that faith cometh by hearing and hearing comes from the word of God. And I was able to say, hold on a minute, the Lord has fed me through the tractor, the Lord has fed me through the vehicles and the cars and the freelander. He's fed me through the ears that faith cometh by hearing and hearing comes from the word of God. And Fred, that got me on a journey and it started my own journey. And this wee recording, I hope that maybe just for one person, I don't know how many people will ever listen to this. There could be thousands, there could be millions for all I know through the internet or whatever. But I'm speaking to you, just one person. This could be a wee encouragement for you. Instead of wasting your time and listening to all the worldly stuff and, and your radios or through your, your phones or, or through your, your USB pen or whatever it might be, that God could feed you through the ear. That faith cometh by hearing and hearing comes from the word of God, you see. And I still remember one or two of my first scriptures that God revealed to me in the tractor seat. Friends, one day I was going across the yard and all of a sudden these verses of scripture came to me, magnified. It's in John chapter 10, verses 27 and 28. And the Lord spoke to me through the tractor that day, his word, when he says, my sheep will hear my voice. He says, I know them, they follow me, I will give unto them eternal life, and they shall never perish, neither shall any man pluck them out of my hand. Friends, I was thunderstruck. I was just in the middle of the yard when God spoke to me so clearly and so plainly through his word. He says, George, my sheep will hear my voice. And you know, friends, that gave me such encouragement as I tried to share the message and, and, and we meet in places here and there that God already has a people prepared to receive the word of God. Another lovely verse that God fed me through the tractor really was in Psalm 16, verse 17. And God said, Thou wilt show me the path of life. In thy presence is fullness of joy. At thy right hand there are pleasures forevermore, friends. And then a lovely proverb, Trust in the Lord with all thy heart, and lean not on your own understanding, but in all your ways acknowledge him, and he shall direct your paths. And you know, friends, when I think of that, when I think of this song, Behind the Wheel is My God, and some of the words of the song says that we're lifted from the dirt path, we're lifted from the, the miry clay, and how God has set our feet now upon a rock, and, and friends, how he's given us that firm place to stand now. And he's put that new song in our mouth, the hymn of praise to our God, and many shall see it and fear and shall put their trust in the Lord. And friends, that's why I wanted to come to Tully Legan just to share this. When I thought of Harry Ferguson just lying up in that wee shack of a place there, and how his own earthly journey, an engineer and genius as far as agriculture is concerned, a genius as far as the four-wheel drive, maybe that's why I love the Freelander here, we're sitting with the four-wheel drive, and he had all this developed about 15 years before it really took off in the worldly sense of the word. And I thought of the passion that I had and the passion Thomas McGregor had here at Tully Legan just for cars. But the passion that we have to share the good news of the gospel, the only thing that really matters. We think of John 3.16 was another one that was broke down to me one day. I was rolling the field and I was just going up and down the boring jobs on the farm and and how God there again spoke to me in John 3, 16, those 25 words that for God so loved you, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever believes in him should not perish, but should have everlasting life, that there are heaven to gain and, and the hell to shun. And friends, that, that has given us the passion to produce these wee CDs in the first place, to produce the DVDs in the first place, not because of anything ourselves 
our lifespan in this life is short, but we, we want to leave something that, that something that will last, something that somebody could maybe, maybe digging through a cupboard one day and, and they find a wee disc or, or maybe poking through an old car, a second hand car and they find a wee CD. And that could be your divine appointment, you see. That could be somebody's divine appointment behind the wheel, you see, is our God. And friends, I think of the journey of life I think in my own journey here, if minutes of time, God has spoke to me just and, and pulled the handbrake on. He spoke to me in the first place when he told me about my son. He told me how he revealed Ephesians chapter 2 to me and black and white friends. A man one asked me one day, could you share the gospel in a minute to me? I haven't got time to listen to you, but can you give it to me in one minute? I said, I can give it to you in one minute. If you just give me one minute. And friends, I took them to Ephesians chapter 2. And the very first verses, we're dead. We're dead spiritually. And then he, he came back to me and he says, what does that mean? I, I'm physically alive. I says, you're physically alive, but you're spiritually dead. That happened way back in the Garden of Eden. And every single human being in the world ever since, we're born that way. We're born spiritually dead. We're physically alive at this moment in time, but we're spiritually dead. Then he says, go on, go on a bit further then. You've only 30 seconds left. I says, verse 4 says, But God, but God in his great mercy, wherewith he loved us, even when we were dead in sin, he hath quickened us. I says, my friend, do you get the hold of that? We're born spiritually dead, but God in his great mercy, God brings us under conviction of sin. God lets us see our sin. God lets us see our hopeless state. God lets us see that we're spiritually dead. And maybe, my friend, you're listening and you're watching this at the minute and you feel that way. You feel lost. You feel empty. You may even feel suicidal. Maybe a young person with all the pressures of this world and, and you're grasping for straws. Maybe this is your straw. Not because of us, all because of the Word of God, you see. But God in His great mercy, wherewith He loved us, even when we were dead in sin, He hath quickened us. Oh, friends, come close here. If you can feel God speaking to you, if you can feel that still, small voice just speaking not to your head, but to your heart, God is speaking to you personally through this wee recording. God is beginning to whisper in your ear. He says, you have 10 seconds left. I says, right, Ephesians 2, verse 8. By grace. For by grace are we saved through faith, and that not of ourselves. It's a gift from God. Not of works, at least any man should boast, my friends. We're dead, but God, by grace. Oh, friend, as you're listening to this or you're watching this, can you see it? Behind the wheel is our God, and God could pull the handbrake on. And God could turn you right around. This free lander is a very good turning circle. One minute we could be heading that road, and, and many a handbrake turn I've done in my life. And you could be heading to a lost eternity at the minute, but by God's sovereign grace, he could whisper in your ear and he can turn you right around. And you're heading a new way now. You're heading heaven now. You're heading to paradise now. This is life eternal, the Bible says, that I may know thee, the one true God, and Jesus Christ, whom thou hast sent. Oh, friends, I wonder, I wonder. From this lovely estate of Tully Legan, of originally with 2,000 acres, from the whole history behind the place, from the passion with the man with the car, the passion with this young mechanic. But friends, we have a passion that is beyond any passion, the passion to sow the seed of the gospel, to sow, tell you about the Lord Jesus Christ, how the Lord Jesus Christ went to the cross at Calvary to die for you, my friend. If you were the only person in the world, the Lord had, in his great plan of salvation, went to the cross and he died for you. But he rose again from the dead, conquering very death itself. Oh, friends, I want to finish with John 3.16 again. I just want to tell you things in black and white, you see. I don't want to make it complicated for you, because I couldn't understand it if it was complicated. Most of the gospel is a mystery. But for God so loved you, you see, that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever ever believes in him should not perish. Oh, friend, do you get it? Is God letting that wee bit of light shine on you? Can you see just that wee bit? God doesn't want you to perish. He wants you to receive the full plan of salvation. But you must do that 
by receiving the Lord Jesus Christ, confessing your sin before a holy God, and say, Lord, I don't know much about this, but Lord, I need you. I need you in my heart. I need you in my life. I need you, Lord, to show me more. Show me more what this is really all about. And I pray with all my heart that by God's saving grace that you may come to know the Lord Jesus Christ as Lord and Saviour. And you would put the word of God into the vehicle through a, a pen or through your phone or through a CD and you'll feed yourself on the word of God. That you'll keep feeding yourself and the, sitting in the traffic jams or out wherever you are. Feed on the word of God and God will reveal himself more and more to you. He'll reveal, the word, he'll reveal the word of God to you. He'll take this book, which is a living book, the living Bible, and he'll feed you through it, step by step, and he'll take you on a journey, my friend. He'll take you on a journey. And friends, what a journey it is. Because this life is just a, a, a wee vapour here for a little while, but eternity is forever. And you'll either be in one of two places, my friend. You'll either be in the pits of hell itself, or you'll be in the glories of heaven. You know, I'm sitting here in this lovely estate and, and all the beauty of creation all around us with the trees and, and with the landscape and with all these old type buildings or whatever. But my friends, there's another place coming for every child of God. It's called paradise. It's called heaven itself. And when we draw our last physical breath, we will be heading to one of two places, either to a lost eternity in the pits of hell or to paradise. The only word in the English language that can be translated is the word paradise. And friends, I don't need to describe paradise. It cannot be explained. It's the Father's house. It's heaven. It's where every child of God is going. Oh, behind the wheel is my God. I wonder, can you say that? I wonder, can you say that? Behind the wheel is my God. And my friend, if you can say that, then a miracle has happened in your life. You've been transformed, or you're being transformed by the power of Almighty God. Hold you tight to that steering wheel. Hold tight to the faith that God has given you. And if it hasn't transformed you yet, and then I pray with all my heart that you'll get down on your knees and you'll cry unto God for mercy and ask him to save your soul. Say, Lord, help me, Lord Jesus. Come into my heart, Lord Jesus. Come into day, come into stay. Come into my heart, Lord Jesus. And I pray that with all my heart for every single person that's listening, every single person that's watching, every single person that has got that need. God can meet your need. Because behind the wheel is my God. Behind the wheel, and I pray from this place that is your God as well that you'll come to know the God of the Bible. You'll come to know the Lord Jesus Christ as Lord and Saviour. That you'll seek him into your heart and seek him into your life. And then you'll be on a journey. Not an earthly journey, my friend. Yes, it begins on this earth. But one million years from now, my friend, you will be somewhere. You'll either be in heaven or you'll be in hell. But I pray with all my heart that the Saviour will find you that you'll yield your life over to him and then you'll be on a journey, a journey of a lifetime. And when the time comes, it'll be absent from the body and present with the Lord. And the way over in the free land of the day, I was just singing just a wee final verse for the hymn, friends. Come really close, please. Come really close. I'm pressing on the upward way. New heights I'm gaining every day. Still praying as I onward bound. Oh Lord, plant my feet. Plant our feet, friends. Plant our feet on higher ground. My heart has no desire to stay. Where doubts arise and fear dismay. Though some may dwell. Friends, the whole world wants to dwell in this married clay, in this worldly. But my prayer, my aim, is higher ground. And I pray with all my heart that that will be your prayer also. Behind the wheel, as you listen to the songs, as you listen to this wee recording, I pray it'll be an encouragement to you. I pray it'll be a blessing to you. I pray with all my heart that I will see you in paradise one day, that I will see you in the glories of heaven one day. Then this wee recording will be worthwhile. May God bless you all. 
Heavenly Father, I just pray for every life that is listening or watching. I pray, Father, you'll meet every single need. In the Lord Jesus Christ's name we pray. Amen. Amen.